Hello everyone. Uh, in this session, uh, I'll be discussing about uh, importance of selenium and importance of vitamin A. Um, selenium is a very uh, crucial type one nutrient, uh, basically required for uh, mainly for thyroid hormone. Okay, uh, not too many people know about selenium actually, uh, people we always talk about iodine uh, for hormone but uh, uh, selenium is as important as, uh, important as iodine. Uh, selenium is also important for uh, immunity building, uh, it is also important for many other functions which you will see in uh, importance of selenium tutorial, health spoken tutorial, uh, so you will enjoy it. Uh, some of the food which are very high in uh, selenium, uh, you will see that. Uh, make sure that you tell um, specifically uh, women because we do see a lot of hypothyroidism in women, you know. So that will, uh, selenium, uh, you know, recipes you will be seeing. Uh, you will enjoy those recipes and uh, thank you so much. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on the importance of selenium. In this tutorial, we will learn about benefits of selenium in our body, symptoms of its deficiency, food sources of selenium. Selenium is a micronutrient found in most foods. It is an essential component of enzymes. Our body uses selenium to produce selenoproteins. They are required to carry out different functions in our body. Selenoproteins are involved in DNA synthesis. They are also required for protection against cell damage and infections. They are required to keep our muscles healthy and our immune system stronger. For a healthy thyroid gland, selenium and selenoproteins are required. Highest amount of selenium is present in the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is a butterfly shaped gland present in the neck region. Selenoproteins help in the metabolism of thyroid hormones. Thyroxin and triodothyronine are the two main thyroid hormones. Thyroxin is also known as T4 and triodothyronine is known as T3. Selenoproteins help in converting inactive T4 to active T3. These hormones are essential for growth, metabolism and development. Selenium is beneficial for people with autoimmune thyroiditis. It is a condition in which our immune system attacks the thyroid gland. Selenium is vital for brain function. It helps in motor function, coordination, memory and cognition. Development of sperms and production of testosterone requires selenium. It reduces the risk of cancer and heart diseases as well. Selenium also acts as an antioxidant. Antioxidants are substances that protect our body from damage by free radicals. Free radicals are substances that are naturally produced in our body. They become harmful only when they are excessive. Let us now look at the conditions associated with selenium deficiency. Cation disease occurs in children with selenium deficiency. In this condition, the heart is enlarged and functions poorly. Cashenbeck disease is a disorder of bones and joints. It is seen in adolescents and children with deficiency. Increase in infertility in men and prostate cancer are also seen. I will now tell you the symptoms of selenium deficiency. Depressed mood, anxiety, confusion, 
and muscle weakness are some of the symptoms. Selenium deficiency can increase the risk for certain conditions. Selenium and iodine deficiency together increases the risk of thyroid disease. Hypothyroidism is also associated with selenium deficiency. It is a condition in which production of thyroid hormone is low. Deficiency increases the risk of cancer, Alzheimer's and heart disease. Let us look at the groups that are at risk of deficiency. People having HIV, people undergoing dialysis, people living in regions where the soil lacks selenium. I will now tell you the recommended intake of selenium. Recommended dietary intake of selenium per day differs for different age groups. 1 to 3 years old require 20 micrograms. For 4 to 8 years old it is 30 micrograms. 9 to 13 year olds require 40 micrograms. 14 to 18 year olds require 55 micrograms. Adults require 55 micrograms. Pregnant women require 60 micrograms. Lactating mothers require 70 micrograms. To meet these requirements, it is advised to include selenium rich food. Let us look at the food sources of selenium. Chicken, chicken liver, eggs, fish and shellfish are good sources. Goat meat, goat liver and goat kidney are also excellent sources. Grains, pulses and seeds also have selenium. It is also present in a few green leafy vegetables. We will now see the amount of selenium present in different food items. Please note that the amount of selenium mentioned is for raw food items. One egg has around 40 micrograms of selenium. 100 grams of crab has around 71 micrograms. 100 grams or 2 small pieces of mackerel has approximately 64 micrograms. 100 grams or 2 goat kidneys has about 142 micrograms. 100 grams or 2 chicken liver has around 46 micrograms. 100 grams or 4 small pieces of chicken has nearly 20 micrograms. 30 grams or 2 tablespoons of split green gram with skin has about 15 micrograms. 30 grams or 2 tablespoons of dried peas have nearly 15 micrograms. 30 grams or 2.5 tablespoons of little millet has around 12 micrograms. 30 grams or 2 tablespoons of wheat has approximately 14 micrograms. 10 grams or 1 tablespoon of garden cress seeds have nearly 5 micrograms. 10 grams or 1 tablespoon of sesame seeds have about 3 micrograms. 10 grams or 1 tablespoon of Niger seeds have around 4 micrograms. 100 grams of agathi leaves have around 30 micrograms. 100 grams of amaranth leaves have approximately 21 micrograms. Include these foods in your daily diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on selenium rich 
vegetarian recipes. In this tutorial, we will learn about benefits of selenium in our body, a few vegetarian recipes. Selenium is a micronutrient found in most of the foods. It is an essential component of enzymes. Selenium is required to produce selenoproteins. Our body uses selenium to perform different functions. Most of these functions are performed by selenoproteins. Selenoproteins are involved in DNA synthesis. They are also required for protection against cell damage and infections. The importance of selenium has been explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for more details. Let us now see the preparation of the recipes. Before we begin, note that one bowl mentioned in this tutorial is 150 milliliters. The first recipe is Little Millet Idli. To make this recipe, you will need 30 grams or 2.5 tablespoons of Little Millet, 15 grams or 1 tablespoon of whole black gram without skin, 1 small washed and grated carrot, 1 teaspoon oil or ghee, salt, to taste. Procedure Wash and soak little millet and black gram overnight. Next day, grind everything into a smooth batter using a little water. Transfer the batter into a bowl. Cover the bowl and leave it to ferment for 6 to 8 hours in a warm place. Once the batter is fermented, Add salt and grated carrot. Mix everything well. Next, grease the idli molds with oil or ghee. Pour the batter into the molds. Add one glass of water in the steaming vessel and place the mold in it. Close the vessel with a lid and steam the idlis for 15 to 20 minutes. Once they are done, Allow the idlis to cool. Remove them from the mold and serve. Little millet idli is ready. Three small idlis have around 16 micrograms of selenium. Next recipe is sesame seeds chutney powder. To make this recipe, you will need 2 tablespoons of roasted sesame seeds. 1 tablespoon of cumin seeds, 1 tablespoon of whole black gram without skin, 5 to 6 dry red chilies, 1 piece of dry coconut, salt to taste. Procedure Heat a pan, dry roast whole black gram, red chilies, dry coconut, and cumin seeds. Roast them on a low flame until they turn light brown in color. Transfer them onto a plate and allow them to cool. Once cooled, transfer them into a mixer jar along with roasted sesame seeds. To this add salt and grind everything into a fine powder. Transfer this powder into a bowl. Sesame seeds Chutney powder is ready. One fourth bowl of this chutney powder has around 12 micrograms of selenium. Third recipe is sprouted white peas curry. To make this recipe, you will need 30 grams or 2 tablespoons of sprouted white peas, 30 grams or 2 handful of washed and chopped amaranth leaves. You will also need 2 to 3 chopped garlic, 1 small chopped onion, 1 teaspoon each of cumin and mustard seeds, half teaspoon of turmeric powder, half teaspoon chili powder, salt to taste, 
वन टी स्पून ऑयल और घी प्रोसीजर वी विल फर्स्ट स्प्राउट द वाइट पीस वॉश एंड सोक द वाइट पीस ओवर नाइट नेक्स्ट मॉर्निंग स्ट्रेन आउट द एक्सेस वॉटर यूजिंग अ स्ट्रेनर फिल अ बोल विद वॉटर एंड प्लेस द स्ट्रेनर ऑन द बोल डू नॉट इमर्स द स्ट्रेनर इन द वॉटर इट शुड बी केप्ट इन सच अ वे दैट द स्ट्रेनर टच इज द वॉटर लीव इट इन अ वॉर्म प्लेस फॉर स्प्राउटिंग नोट दैट टाइम टेकन फॉर डिफरेंट बीन्स टू स्प्राउट मे वेरी फ्रॉम वन टू थ्री डेज इट ऑल्सो डिपेंड्स ऑन द वेदर कंडीशंस वेन द स्प्राउट्स अपियर प्रेशर कुक द स्प्राउटेड पीस do so until 4 to 5 whistles and then switch off the flame open the lid of the cooker after the pressure releases on its own keep this aside for later use heat oil or ghee in a pan and add the mustard and cumin seeds once the seeds splutter add garlic and onion saute until they turn light brown in color to this add the amaranth leaves and mix well cook this for 5 minutes next add pressure cooked white peas sprouts spices and salt mix again and add half a glass of water let it boil for 5 to 6 minutes Sprouted white peas curry is ready. Half bowl of sprouted white peas curry has around 21 micrograms of selenium. Our last recipe is split green gram chapati. To make this recipe you will need 30 grams or 2 tablespoons of split green gram without skin. 1 small grated carrot 1 teaspoon cumin seeds 1 teaspoon carom seeds 1 green chili you will also need 1 teaspoon oil or ghee and salt as per taste procedure wash and soak the split green gram overnight drain the excess water using a strainer grind the split green gram green chili and salt into a smooth paste do not add water while making the paste transfer the paste into a bowl add grated carrot cumin seeds and carom seeds mix everything well grease the back of a plate with oil or ghee take a small ball of the prepared paste place it on the plate and press it with your fingers to make a chapati you can also use an aluminium foil instead of a plate heat a pan and roast the chapati by applying some ghee or oil cook until both sides are cooked split green gram chapati is ready two small chapatis have around 16 micrograms of selenium Include these recipes in your daily diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining. Um hello everyone. Uh in this session I will be talking about uh, vitamin A. Uh again uh, vitamin A uh, type 1 nutrient. uh not necessarily needed on day to day basis if you have uh enough storage okay uh but uh, you know uh who do recommend to include vitamin a rich uh, vegetables and fruit uh on a daily basis uh what is the importance of vitamin a and what are the type of vitamin a uh, there is one which is retinol uh, this is the pre formed uh, vitamin a uh, very easily absorbed directly get used up in the body okay for vitamin a function so uh, make sure that you know children have and adults also we have lot more retinol 
vitamin A rather than carotenoid vitamin A. Uh, carotenoid vitamin A is basically it's present in uh, all your uh, yellow and orange vegetables and fruit. Uh, that is carotenoid. Uh, carotenoid has to get converted into retinol. So that conversion rate is very poor. You know, uh, it's 12 is to 1. So uh, I do prefer that, you know, children and uh, mothers especially, they get uh, retinol. Uh, where do you get retinol from? Uh, from eggs, from uh, uh, milk, you know, from, uh, from fat of the milk. Uh, and also from uh, uh, non-veg food, uh, specifically from liver. Uh, uh, what is the function of vitamin A? Mainly it prevents uh, night blindness. It prevents a lot of uh, vision issue. Uh, you know, uh, it is important for uh, retina. Uh, there is a pigment called rhodopsin. Okay, so that's uh, rhodopsin requires vitamin A to function. Uh, it also help uh, vitamin A is also very helpful in uh, uh, prevention of acne. Okay, in fact, we treat uh, people who have acne with vitamin A, uh, you know, a cream or gel. Uh, we sometimes we also give them vitamin A tablet. Okay, a uh, lot of side effect with those tablet. So not uh, I don't generally recommend, but uh, it's it's important that you know uh, specifically for. Uh, teenagers that we recommend them to have vitamin A rich food. Uh, other functions are basically uh, immunity so it builds a very good immunity okay and that's why uh, our children they get vitamin A doses you know in pri primary health care centers okay so that you want, you want to remember it's just, just not a night blindness it also helps with the immunity okay uh, rich source i've already mentioned uh, this tutorial that uh, i'm going to show has much more detail uh, do watch it and share it with everybody thank you welcome to the spoken tutorial on importance of vitamin a in this tutorial we will learn about role of vitamin A in the body, causes and effects of vitamin A deficiency, recommended intake and food sources. Vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. It can be obtained through diet and supplements. Two main forms of vitamin A are found in our food. One is preformed vitamin A, which includes retinol and retinyl ester. It is derived from animal sources. Second form is provitamin A. This includes alpha carotene, beta carotene, and beta cryptoxanthin. These are all derived from plant sources. Preformed vitamin A from animal sources is an active form of vitamin A. Whereas provitamin A from plant sources is an inactive form. During digestion, it has to be converted to retinol. Retinol is the active form. 12 micrograms of beta carotene gets converted to 1 microgram of retinol. This conversion occurs in the intestine. It is then absorbed and stored in the liver until required by the body. Vitamin A is essential for many physiological processes. It plays a crucial role in vision and supports proper functioning of the eyes. Vitamin A is also required for the formation of Rhodopsin. Rhodopsin is a pigment in the eyes which helps us to see at night. Lack of rhodopsin will cause significantly reduced ability to see in dim light. Vitamin A is important for the repair and maintenance of the skin. It also supports cell growth and division. It plays a critical role in the formation and maintenance of various organs. For example, heart, 
lungs, kidneys, etc. Vitamin A acts as an antioxidant as well. Antioxidants protect our cells from damage by free radicals. Free radicals are naturally produced in the body. They become harmful when they are excessive in the body. Hence, vitamin A reduces the damage caused by free radicals. Vitamin A has other roles in the body too. It maintains the strength and function of all the tissues and organs, such as the skin, lining of the respiratory tract, gut, inner ear and eye. Maintaining a healthy immune system is another such example. Vitamin A is crucial for newborn health as well. It helps the babies in their development and protects them from infections. Cholesterol is rich in vitamin A. Cholesterol is the first breast milk produced by a mother soon after delivery. It should be fed to the baby within one hour of delivery. Additional benefits of cholesterol have been explained in another tutorial. Please refer to our website to know more. Next, we will see the effects of vitamin A deficiency in our body. The most common effect of its deficiency is xerophthalmia. It is a group of eye diseases which occur due to vitamin A deficiency. Its symptoms progress in various stages. The first symptom is night blindness. In this condition, the vision is normal during the day. It becomes difficult to see at night or under low light conditions. As the deficiency progresses, the eyes become dry, dull and wrinkled. Another specific indication of this deficiency is bitot spots. These are irregular shaped foamy substances appearing on the corner of the eye. All these signs point out to a long standing deficiency. Let us look at signs of a severe and sudden onset of vitamin A deficiency. The cornea becomes dry which leads to loss of tears and loss of mucus. Cornea is the transparent part which covers the black part of the eye. If this is not treated properly, it can lead to corneal ulcer. Ulcers can appear on the cornea and eyes become inflamed. The most severe form of deficiency is keratomalacia. In this, more than one third of the cornea gets affected. The whole cornea becomes thick and then melts away. It is important to know about these symptoms of vitamin A deficiency. In later stages, when symptoms become severe, there is a risk of becoming blind. The risk of death is also high in such cases. Another major consequence is an increased risk of severe infections. For example, diarrhea and measles. Infection further increases the body's demand for vitamin A. This makes the deficiency get worse. As a result, a vicious cycle of deficiency and infection occurs. Immunity also gets impaired due to deficiency. Those with vitamin A deficiency are also at a risk of anemia. Fatigue and stunted growth can occur. Dry hair, dry skin and pimples are other signs of vitamin A deficiency. Deficiency in pregnant women can result in preterm deliveries. It can also result in low birth weight babies and birth defects in them. There is also a risk of 
reduced stores of vitamin A in newborn infants. Let us look at some factors which can increase the risk of vitamin A deficiency. First is the inadequate intake of vitamin A rich foods. Another factor is inadequate intake and absorption of fat. Hence, people with intestinal and pancreatic diseases are at a risk. Those with liver diseases are also at a risk of deficiency. Liver diseases impair the capacity to store and release vitamin A in the body. Children, pregnant and lactating women are at a risk of deficiency. This is because their requirements for vitamin A are high. To avoid deficiency, regular intake of adequate vitamin A is necessary. 1 to 3 year old children should get 390 micrograms per day. 4 to 9 year old children should get 510 to 630 micrograms per day. 770 to 860 micrograms per day is recommended for adolescents. For adult women and men, 840 and 1000 micrograms per day is recommended. The same is recommended for elderly men and women above 50 years of age. Pregnant and lactating women should take 900 to 950 micrograms per day. Let us look at the food sources of vitamin A. There are two main sources of vitamin A, animal source and plant source. In animal sources, vitamin A is found as retinol, which is the active form. Goat and chicken liver are excellent sources of vitamin A. One small bowl of goat liver has 15,655 micrograms of retinol. Two chicken livers have 3,486 micrograms. Egg yolks are also rich in vitamin A. Two egg yolks have 539 micrograms. Two tablespoons of butter has around 250 micrograms. 50 grams of cheddar cheese has about 300 micrograms. 100 grams of fresh cream has 400 micrograms. Plant food sources contain vitamin A in the form of carotenoids. Green leafy vegetables are excellent sources. For example, leaves of drumstick, amaranth, fenugreek, agathi. 100 grams of drumstick leaves has 17,542 micrograms. 100 grams of fenugreek leaves has 9,254 micrograms. 100 grams of amaranth leaves has around 8,553 micrograms. Other foods rich in beta carotene are mangoes, papaya, apricot and oranges. One mango has around 300 micrograms. One bowl of papaya has 115 micrograms. Along with intake, proper absorption is important too. Note that retinol is easily absorbed in the body as compared to carotenoids. This means vitamin A from animal sources is better absorbed and stored. It is also utilized better as it does not have to get converted to active form. All the sources of vitamin A need some fat in the diet for proper absorption. It also facilitates better conversion of inactive form to active form. Hence, it is important to include good quality fats in your diet. For example, butter, pure ghee, fish, eggs, nuts and seeds. 
include all these foods in your diet for good health this brings us to the end of the tutorial thanks for joining